If you like the content today, consider becoming a Patreon supporter of Street Smart Swing. When you do that, you get access to my bonus online swing dance content, where you can learn how to master Lindy Hop with the simplest approach on earth. I'll see you in class. <laughs> Woo! Hey guys, Jamin here. This time I'm going to be taking a look at uh, a competition at the Moscow Swing Dance Festival. I love checking out this event because these dancers are just so passionate. They really are. And I see a lot of these same dancers at a lot of events in uh, Russia. And so uh, for whatever reason, I didn't get a chance to see this video and I'm going to check it out now and give you guys my thoughts. All right, they're, uh, they're ready. The excitement's here, here we go. Okay. We got a we got a happy audience. We got happy dancers. This is this is all great ingredients for uh, some inspiration. I don't know about you guys, but I get inspiration whenever the audience is involved, and uh, it just kind of gets me going, and and I I take a little bit more risk. So. I know if that does, if that happens to me, I'm sure it happens to many other dancers. Okay, uh, right now, I can already tell these, I've seen many of these dancers before. I believe a lot of them are instructors, they're professional. Um, so the, I'm not really looking at the technical aspects. I'm actually looking at restraint. I'm seeing uh, what they're choosing not to do because <laughs> that's kind of important once you uh, understand how this technique works. It's really, again, about how you want to use it to stand out. And um, right now it looks good. Looks like there's a lot of restraint. It looks like people aren't coming out swinging all the way. It's a nice little warm up. I got to tell you, I'm loving all of these, these beards. It's awesome. And uh, let's see if there's a correlation between manly beards and amazing leading. Here we go. First couple. Good dancing, good technique. I will say the, the hard part is sometimes when the song is so conspicuous, you get kind of nervous and the timing gets off a little bit. And I feel like that, that couple had great technique, uh, some really, really cool uh, lines, but the timing was a little off a little bit, so I didn't feel anything. All right, all right. So uh, as you can tell, the audience got involved a little bit, uh, usually when the timing is a bit more uh, conspicuous with the music. Uh, the audience loves that. So far, I'm really digging this couple. I'm really, I really like uh, the lines when they're doing these swing outs here. Uh, you can really just appreciate the, the natural look of their body. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah, see when when the swing out is done often, people think that um, you know, it's kind of boring, you know, as a dancer and you want to kind of always do something fancy. But sometimes just doing a swing out is amazing. And you can really see the the beauty of the leader and a follower working together.
Yeah, <laughs> song ended a little early. Uh, pretty good. I love that couple's energy. All right, let's see what's next. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Work the shoulders. <laughs> that's right. Just, <laughs> just three times, right? <laughs> I really liked their energy. I think they worked well together on that that one. All right, here we go. Nice little break. That was a good one. That was a good one, too. I, I really like when dancers take a little bit more risk. And sometimes you get disconnected. And, you know, a lot of judges, like, really go against the grain. And they're just, like, super strict on things like that. But for me, no. I, I, I like the realness more so than the contrived uh, routine. Here we go. I liked that. Some classic moves in there. I love it. not go for the splits when you can just don't rip those pants I've done that like multiple times during a competition oh the followers killing it on the footwork <laughs> that was great <laughs> I love how they covered for each other. It's like, whoops, didn't mean for that to happen. <laughs> Next dancers, please. <laughs> Come on. Ah, yes.
Yeah, see guys, this group, this this group of dancers, they tend to compete a lot. I think they might all be in the same region. And I love seeing it. That I, I see a lot of distinction and personality and style. There's nuance. All of these dancers have something special that I love to see when I, whenever I'm watching these events in, in Russia. <laughs> yes, why not? Put some ballet in there. Yes. Here we go, player one. That's great. <laughs> Just crawl. in the corner she has like the gold skirt on she did like this little freeze and then did the shoulder shake yeah that was that was good that was good Woo! they all still have so much energy see what i'm saying i love this group i love this group Yes, 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 yes. All right, guys, let me talk about this. All right, guys, I really got to say that was so enjoyable to watch. It really is an incredibly refreshing sensation when you have dancers who look distinct. They actually look unique and they're excited about dancing. Um, there, there's no pride that's there. They're just, just energized, and there's so much vivacity that you see that it keeps you glued as an as an onlooker. And I don't blame the audience in this presentation for for being involved and and engaging and yelling. Um, I think audiences do that. You know, they're just kind of hype anyway. But when it's good, it's good, and, and and you want to participate in the excitement of it all. And I will say this group of dancers, I've seen many of these dancers before, and this group to, to me is just so special. It reminds me of a time in swing dancing when the internet was not really used that much for exchanging dance footage. I mean, back in the day, people had VHSs and they would sell their VHS and you would ship it to someone and they would watch that tape and learn the moves. And they might go share some of those moves in their local swing dance community, depending if, you know, they wanted others to know what they know. But but ultimately, at that time, people were kind of isolated and they didn't really had like 
like have like outside influences all the time. And because of that, you, you end up having communities that are birthed from just trial and error. People get out there and they social dance and they run into a, a problem and they kind of come up with a creative solution and they end up developing these unique styles, these regional styles because of that. And back then you could look and say, ah, this person might uh, be from Austin because they're doing these particular things that are kind of known in Austin because of the way they dance in that area. Or that this person's from New York. You know, you see a lot of uh, influence from specific dancers and or they're from France or Canada. You can see their performance aspect or their team choreography kind of looks a certain way. I miss that. That that was a time when people actually worked hard at the craft. It wasn't just easy to pull up a video, copy a move, and totally abdicate the, the main point of jazz, which is the individual expression, right? And so looking at this group, I'm so energized. Every time I see uh, many of these Russian couples, I don't know what it is about this particular region, but I feel like there's such, such energy that's there. And when I watch some of these dancers, I find it fascinating that many of them may not even know some of my personal dance friends and peers. It's weird. We're all around the entire world. We're all scattered out. Granted, of course, we travel and we go to different events. But when I watch some of these dancers, I literally see some of my friends. <laughs> it's really weird how that works out. I don't know if you've ever traveled somewhere. You've gone overseas to a foreign country and you think you see someone from home or you see someone who kind of physically looks like someone else that you know, I get this sensation all the time when I watch certain swing dancers. And just looking at some of these couples here, it's amazing to be able to immediately like pull up in my mind, oh, that's my friend from Dallas or that's my friend from you know, Lebanon or that's my friend from Moscow. I love that, I love that. and. It brings about interesting questions about how, how do we actually create? Where, where is this source coming from? Is this just personality, an extension of our personality, like going out? And because we have physical attributes, you know, that is displayed a certain way and that kind of makes it look like a certain style. And therefore, if I have some of those similar attributes, it, it might look like Maybe I was influenced from that person, even though you didn't know that person. Or is it something else entirely? I just find it fascinating to see certain body types tend to move a certain way. Um, certain combinations of personality with body type tend to move a different way. Um, let me know what you guys think about that. Because I find it fascinating that many of these dancers may not know my friends, but I feel like I'm seeing my friends in some of these dancers, which is really, really cool. Really, really cool. So. Let me just tell you guys the, the, the dancer, uh, the couples that I liked and what stood out to me. Now, the, the very first couple that stood out to me, ha they've been in a lot of other competitions that I've noticed. And I really like just how light their connection is. They always seem very light and in control. And he's the one that had like the blue suit and she had the gold dress on. I love watching this couple. They've been at multiple events and there's just a, there's just an elegance to their dancing. And at any moment when the music changes, their intensity changes and they don't lose that classy aspect to their natural body movement. I really love that about them. The other couple that I love too is for different reasons. It's really interesting. The gentleman who has uh, the red pants on like a flower shirt manly beard. He's dancing with his partner. She's got like a bluish black dress on. I think it might be green, just depending on the, the view here. But when they were moving together, I just, I just saw beautiful lines, just amazing lines. And a lot of times people try to force lines to happen and they kind of look like you know, they're putting on a show that doesn't really fit their body type. It doesn't look right. I don't know if you all know what I'm talking about when people are trying too hard, but certain things that this couple was doing just looked so natural and they took a lot of risk in their, in their body movement, you know, doing those crazy swing outs and touching the floor and, 
and elongating the body, you just saw so much beauty and just the, the shape of their bodies together. I just, I love seeing that. Sometimes couples can just capture that essence of beautiful linear movements so naturally because they're not trying. It's just part of who they are. Another couple I like, there was a gentleman, he had like a gold jacket on. She had like a striped shirt. I like this couple because they took risks. I think there was a softness to the movement. It, it felt more like the elasticity in the body was a little bit more stretched out. And a lot of times uh, when, when you have that type of connection between you and your partner, many of the movements seem very conspicuous because they tend to be elongated and a little bit slower. So you can, you can kind of see when things are going to happen. But I like that this couple was able to balance that, that technical use of the Lindy Hop technique. And they were able to use that in a way that still had surprises. Yes, they got disconnected a few times. I don't really mind that, but it was the fact that my expectations were not met. I thought one thing and they showed me something totally different. That That's special to me. That's something that really stands out to me. Now, this other couple, I love what I loved about them is they just had so much energy. There was just so much energy. There was wild, like abandoned, but yet there was still control. The follower, this gentleman, she had like a blue dress on. Gentleman had like a, like a maroon shirt, blue pants, manly bid, but they both just worked so well together with that flair. There was just like a, a wild, crazy flair and yet still was able to have control in, in those faster tempos. Um, there were a couple of other couples that tried to pull that off, but it didn't come off as well. It always, it always kind of looked like the leader or the follower was just kind of ahead of their partner or it was just, it almost seemed like they really weren't together and they didn't want to be together with that energy, but this couple had that energy together and yet you can still see their personalities were different even when they were working together. So that's what's so cool guys about looking at these videos and these competitions and examining uh, really talented dancers way of moving. I, I love doing that. Um, I learn a lot about my own personal dance journey as a professional, and I, I have an appreciation, particularly for this region, uh, because there's so much uniqueness and distinction that I find in watching a lot of the competitions from this area. So let me know, guys, who do you think was really special in this competition? Who did you like and why did you like them? What was it that stood out to you? Let me know in the comments section below. If you are one of those reserved dancers and you you kind of want to always do something different, you feel shy and you're like, man, I'm j I just wish I was more flamboyant like this dancer. Or I just wish I had more style and I took more risk like this other dancer. That, don't worry, there's, there's nothing wrong with having those thoughts. But I will encourage you, don't abdicate your natural personality. Sometimes you may not shine the best being like incredibly flamboyant. It might not just be the thing that makes you unique. So a lot of times you have to step back a little bit and really look at what makes you special. And I encourage you, if you're that kind of dancer and you feel like your dancing might be a little boring, you might be more on the elegance side where the quality of the movement might be something that you hone in and you amplify that so others can appreciate your natural attributes. So keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. You don't necessarily have to become something else to be great, but a lot of times you have to look inward and sometimes look outward at yourself on video and listen closely to those things that people naturally say about your dancing. Those tend to be those ingredients that need to be cultivated uh, in order for you to maximize your potential. So I would encourage you to, to continue to work if that's you. If you're one of those dancers, it's like, look, I like flash. I want new creative movements. I encourage you to check out some of my free courses. I always focus so much on coming up with new ways to move. That is my gift. That's just what I do. And I love sharing that with people. I have no problem sharing ideas with people in hopes that they're able to take some of those ideas and, and use them as a foundation for something else and for innovation. And so check out some of my courses. I hope they will encourage you to 
uh, go beyond the limits that you, you sometimes put on yourself. So um, let me know, guys, what you thought about this particular competition. What's your favorite region out there in the world? Where do you like to go dance and why? Why is it unique? Um, let me know in the comments section below. If I don't see your comments below, hopefully I get a chance to see some of you uh, in my class online. Take care.